Every May, we do a series in the church titled, Man of God, Help. It's a teaching on marriage intervention. We answer questions. We minister to people that are having any issues in marriage. But you see, this year, because of the disruption, we're not going to be able to take it in the dimension we are taking. So today, we're just starting with something very simple. Man of God, help me connect right. I know there's somebody out there who is about to get wedded, or somebody who is already wedded, or somebody who is just believing God for something. I'm trusting God for the grace for you to connect right in the name of Jesus. In Genesis chapter 2 from verse 18, it's that the Lord God said, it's not good that a man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Keep going. And out of the ground, the Lord God from every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to all the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in step thereof. And the rib, quick the Lord that taken from man, made thee a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Final verse. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and we are not ashamed. I speak over you today that God will connect you rightly to the person that is going to be part of your destiny in the name of Jesus. Whether in marriage, in politics, in business, in ministry, receive the destiny connection you need. In the name of Jesus. Four points and I'll be out of your way. The first one is this. Between being alone and becoming lonely is the intervention of grace. Between being alone and becoming lonely is the intervention of grace. Listen to me. God notices future needs. And God plans for the needs of man before the needs will arise. It's called proactive planning. They call it future back planning. God always makes sure that he looks at the future, sees what will arrive, and begins to plan backwards so that when you catch up with that future, you enter into the best of God. Please listen to me. God saw that Adam was all one. Adam has not reported lonely. Adam has not noticed loneliness. And God has made a plan to bring a wife to Adam before Adam can sense loneliness. I want to say to somebody hearing me today that before it is late, you will have your answer. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's how God behaves. Remember Jesus, before he left the earth, he said to the disciples, he said, listen, I am about to go, but I've made arrangements for you. Another comforter is coming. He didn't go before he made arrangements. He made arrangements before he left. That's how God plans. He doesn't leave us naked. He doesn't leave us without help. I want you to know that there's a prepared partner for you. Listen to me. It's not going to be prepared now. My prayer will not prepare the person. There's a prepared partner. I'm going to call him or her forth. And in the name of Jesus, you will connect right to that person. Now, when I'm talking, don't forget, if it's in your business, there's a destiny helper. If it's in politics, there's a destiny helper. If it's in ministry, there's somebody to partner with you. You can't go alone. No, two are better than one. In Isaiah 34, verse 16, it says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, No one of these shall fail. None shall want her met. My mouth, he has commanded it. And my spirit, he has gathered it. He says, seek out of my book. My mouth has commanded the destiny helper. My mouth has commanded the met. My spirit goes to gather it. Let the hand of the spirit of God go now and bring the person that you need into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Psalm 68 verse 6. It says, God set the solitary in families. He bringeth out those that are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. God set the solitary in families. Ikotora, anayantehe, jagia kreketolata, baleporo kotolataha. You've been solitary for too long. In the name of Jesus, who say I am and whom I serve, I command your family. I bring your husband. I bring your spouse into your life by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You are looking for a partner in your career, in your business. Receive them now. God set the solitary in families. He said he brings them that are bound in chains. Anywhere Satan bound you. Anywhere he locked up your marriage and your career. I come in the name of the Lord. This is an intervention. Let the yoke break in the name of Jesus. Let your destiny come alive. Second point, whoever you connect with in life will either be a helper or a hinderer. Anybody you connect with. God noticed that Adam was all one, alone. And God said, I will send a connection that's a helper. If the devil sends a connection, it's a hinderer. And the question is, who is sending to you? Proverbs 13, 20. He said, he that walketh with the wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Listen to me. Destiny connections are either divine or diabolical. Nothing is an accident. Can you tell somebody by you there, your husband, your wife, anybody watching with you, say, I didn't meet you by accident. Tell somebody, I didn't meet you by accident. Listen to me, we didn't meet by accident. If you doubt me, ask Samson and Delilah. Delilah was sponsored destiny entrapment for Samson. Yeah, she looked beautiful, but she was a beautiful serpent. I came to tell you today, anything sent into your life to mess you up, that thing will be cut off in the name of Jesus. Some connections are corruptions. You don't need a corruption in your destiny. You need a connection that takes you higher. Anyone that enters your life is either a helper or a hinderer. Who are you connecting to? In the Bible, a young man, the Bible defines him as they called him a young prophet, went to prophesy in Samaria, was coming back and connected to somebody called an old prophet. His destiny ended in the mouth of a lion. Why? Because it was a connection that corrupted destiny. I don't know who you are connecting to. You know, sometimes when people are weary, they seek rest in wrong relationships. Many times as men, we get weary. Many times as women, we get weary. Whether a married man or a young man that's not yet married, there are times you feel weariness. Weariness of, pre of the pressure of job. Weariness of the pressure of life. Weariness of challenges in society. Weariness of the attack of the devil. And then something begins to push you into a relationship. Listen to me. Be careful that the relationship is not of the devil. You have waited for too long. Young lady, don't throw your life away because you are being weary. You have waited for long ago. Young man, don't throw your life away because you are weary. Young lady, you got married and the marriage is not working out. Don't get into a wrong relationship because you are feeling weary. Anytime weariness comes, Satan sets a trap. And that's why many young girls run into a mess. Remember in Judges chapter 4, 17 to 22, you see the story of Jael and the story of Caesarea. Caesarea was a man of war. He's running back from battle. The battle between him and Deborah and Barak. And he's running back home and he's tired. Be Deborah, Barak are pursuing him. And he saw a woman called Jael and said, Jael, can I come into your house and rest? And Jael said, come and rest. Why? The guy is weary. He's a general in the army, but he's weary. He's a captain of the host, but he's weary. He walks into the house and lies down. And Jael gives him milk that is poisoned. He lies down there, totally fucked out. And Jael took, uh, takes a hammer and fastens something on his neck and kills him right there. Why? The man sought rest where he shouldn't seek rest. I'm asking you today, where are you seeking rest? Because some rest can lead to destruction. How do you know that the relationship is not a rest for you? Is it abusive? Then it's not your rest. Is it ungodly? Then it's not your rest. Is it an unequal yoke? Then it's not your rest. 
When I mean unequal yoke, whether an unbeliever that you are connected to or a Christian who is not of the same standing with you is an unequal yoke. It's not your rest. Is he a dead end relationship? The guy is directionless. He has no vision, no plan, nothing. That's not your rest. You, just, you don't need any man. You need the right man. Listen to me. One week in the wrong relationship, you will regret ever entering it. Don't do a by all means journey. Calm down. God has a plan. And God will bring you into your own home in the name of Jesus Christ. How do you know it's your rest? Is it God honoring? Then it's your rest. Is it destiny focused? When you came together, is there a vision both of you saw together? I don't mean did you dream in the night. I mean, both of you, when you talk, does it look as if your life is like an arrow pointed in a particular direction? That there's a panting in your soul and a panting in his soul that is combining to make destiny impact either in ministry or in politics or in business. Is it destiny focused? Your connection, is it gift steering? Is it steering not the best out of you? That's how to know. Not can he perform well in bed. And then, how do you know it is your relationship? Is there feelable love in it? Do you know that love can be felt? Love can be palpable. There's an excitement that goes with it. Anybody you are connected to who is not excited about you, you are begging and pushing him or her like truck. That's not your rest. So God brought this girl to Adam. And Adam saw her and there was this feelable love. Something shook in Adam's body. <laughs> Adam got up and said, now this one I go take. I saw orangutan, it's not orangutan. I saw zebra, it's not zebra. I saw uh, chimpanzee, it's not chimpanzee. I saw Mr. Monkey, no monkey, I'm not interested in you. This one, that's the one I want. I declare over you today, the right one is connecting to you. The right husband, the right wife, the right relationship, the right business connection, the right partner in any area. Take the grace for it now in the name of Jesus Christ. And that takes me to the third point. Until the willingness of man intersects with the will of God, God's perfect will will not be activated. Until the willingness of man intersects with the will of God, God's perfect will is not activated. God brought Eve to Adam but God did not impose Eve on Adam. Adam woke up from the sleep. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Adam was not forced. He made a choice. Psalm 25, 9 to 14. He said, the meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his commandments and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. He said, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. So God will teach you how to choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. How does God do it? The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. So if you fear God, God will show you his covenant. He doesn't force you. He allows you to choose. That's why a lot of people are waiting and wasting. A lot of young girls are saying, if God has made a provision for me, where is the man, pastor? Why is there a delay? I'll tell you why there's a delay. Let me give you a few reasons why people are wasting and waiting. The first one is strange veils and yokes of resistance. Strange veils that cover them. Strange yokes of resistance. And that's why God sent me to you right now. Lift your hand wherever you are. Any evil veil covering your destiny. Any yoke of resistance, ancestral yokes, witchcraft yokes, curses, bondages that says they can't locate you or you can't locate them. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, there are many lighted people covered under bushels. There's something in the family laying claim to them. Saying you are not going, you are not going. Anytime they do an introduction, it ends the relationship. Anytime it looks as if it's working, something disconnects it. And some people, they, before they were 25, people were running up and down. From 25 to 35, not one person had come and said, I love you. 
Everybody that comes around and says, married man looking for a girlfriend. No, sister, that's not your person. I cast that spirit, every demonic body order, everything that's oppressive from people, every strength rag they are carrying, break in the name of Jesus Christ. The second thing that makes people wait and waste is insensitivity of potential spouses. They are not sensitive spiritually and they are mentally blind. Brothers and sisters, there are many people in church who are not sensitive spiritually. A young lady is in church Full of the Holy Ghost. They're looking at appearances only. They're not looking at character. They're not looking at the presence of God. They're not looking at marriage material in the sense of this girl is educated, she's intelligent, she's hardworking, she's respectful. No, they're looking at, okay, how pointed is her breast? The young people, are, the young girl is looking at, is the man's muscles out? Does he have six pack or seven pack or eight pack? How is he looking? Well, you're going to get a Tyson that will beat you down. It doesn't matter how you do it. All I'm telling you today is this. You need to become sensitive. There are people that are hanging around. The lady they need to marry is in their yard. It's in the marketplace with them. It's in the choir, in the ushering department with them. They see her every day. They pass by her. They're looking over there to get a death sentence when there is a life giver beside them. Insensitivity. Spiritual blindness. And some of them have approached a girl like that and she says, she'll get size. She didn't know she was a size. She didn't know her destiny is being negotiated away. What other things I come against that blindness, mental blindness, spiritual blindness, break in the name of Jesus. Now your eyes are open. The third thing that can make people wait and waste is distraction of evil entanglements, soul ties, immoral corruption. The girl is too busy enjoying in quote, a relationship with a young man who just wants her body, who has no plan for her destiny. So they keep going. It's I love him. I love him. Oh, I'm excited about him. He has a good job. He travels abroad. He's taking care of me. Oh, things are working out. I'm waiting for him to propose. He has no plan of proposing. He has three other girls like you. And he's carrying on like that. And my time, he has wasted your life. And now you are getting to 30 something. And he just jumps away. Seven years is gone. You met him at 25. You are 32. And they're going to start a new relationship at that time. And you don't know how to begin. You say they broke my heart. You go from native doctor to native doctor. You go from church to church. You pray, you fast. God bring him back. God bring him back. He was never there before. He was playing a game. His heart was never with you. I take authority over soul ties. I take authority over immoral corruption. I take authority over delusions. I take authority over deceptions. Anything that's keeping you from the right person, break in the name of Jesus. Now, the eye of your understanding, open. Another thing that keeps people waiting and wasting is financial and social inadequacy. Oh, the young man has finished calculating. He has planned and planned and planned. Fixed date upon date upon date. <laughs> and uh, our people say, when you finish planning and nothing happens, it looks like uh, you are stupid. <laughs> you finish planning, money no come. What did mango does, like my village man will say. <laughs> what did mango does? And you move on. <laughs> you don't know what to do. You don't know how to move forward. I come today to tell you, my God is a source. My God is a source. My God is a source. The young lions lack and suffer one. But they that serve the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Marriage is a good thing. He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. And obtaineth favor of the Lord. Now, get your favor. Every jobless young man, over 25 years hearing my voice, shate kopora na legetelekai. I am sent by God to you and I command channels open to you. Opportunities be created to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your job. Receive your help. Receive your help now in the name of Jesus. Another thing that keeps people waiting and waiting, wasting is self-projection outside of the will of God. When you begin to push yourself and brothers and sisters Anywhere you get to that God didn't send you, you will pay your bill in that place. 
And I'm asking you today, don't project yourself. When a chicken, when a, an egg hatches before time, it's neither still an egg nor will it become a chicken. It's wasted, it's gone. Stop pushing yourself to somebody. God is still preparing you. Please, calm down, let him finish you. Until God finished Adam, he didn't bring out an Eve. And until God finished Eve, he didn't bring him to Adam. He just got born again. Three months into Christianity. All you are thinking about is getting married. You have not gone through discipleship. You have no understanding of the faith. You have no understanding of life. You have not been taught character and conduct. Your values are still messed up. And you are running into marriage. Calm down. Slow down. Even if you are going to wed that person, both of you go for class. Let the Christ nature be formed in you. He said, my little children, of whom I travel again in birth until Christ is formed in you. Let him be formed in you. Don't be in a hurry. If not, you're going to get married. And when you get back home, you won't like what you see. I speak over you today. In the name that's above every name. Grace not to waste your destiny. is commanded now. You will connect rightly. You will connect rightly. You say, Pastor, why are you ministering the way you are ministering? Well, that's the job of a spiritual covering. To bring you into your right connection. In Ruth chapter 3 verse 18. No me say to Ruth. He said, listen, sit still, my daughter. For this man will not rest until he has done what he needs to do today. Why was Naomi speaking like that? Because by her spiritual authority, she has settled everything for Ruth to enter into her wedding. Lekra pola katiata. Jadian grekete here. I spent hours in the presence of God this night before coming to you. And I speak in the name that's above every name. That right now, whatever it takes for you to get wedded this 2020, take it in the name of Jesus. The spirit of resistance break in the name of Jesus. Now, the Lord push you forward. Anything standing on your way, my God, curse it. My God, take it out of way. In the name of Jesus. And well, the last point, I'm going to make it now. And then we continue with that next week, if the Lord allows. Is this. That living and cleaving may take a moment. But becoming one flesh takes a lifetime. Living and cleaving may take a moment. But becoming one flesh takes a lifetime. So God will connect you rightly. Now some of you are already connected. You are already wedded. And you got to the house. And there is confusion everywhere. <laughs> calm down now. Calm down. Calm down. It never late to. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> don't, don't, don't scatter everything. Don't start walking out. No. I tired for this thing. How many months are they tired? Three months and one day. <laughs> you are tired. Please calm down. No, 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 no. You can't become one flesh in one day. That's a process. There's a process. It takes a while. So what you need to grow up into each other. Yes, you need to grow into each other. You need to learn to prioritize one another. You need to learn to bear one another's nakedness. You need to learn to integrate your lives intentionally. It doesn't happen in one day, but it will happen. Just prayerfully. Love one another. Care for one another. Forgive one another. Forbear with one another. Yes, you are seeing the nakedness, but don't be ashamed of that party. And God is going to make your home last a lifetime. Now, wherever you are hearing my voice, the beginning of every turnaround is salvation. If you have not given your life to Jesus, nothing precious from heaven will come into your hands. It will not work that way. God will not take his treasures and then trust into the hand of an enemy. If you are not born again, you are not at peace with God. And being born again means you look at your life and say, I repent of my sins. I know I'm a sinner and I'm walking away from my past. Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. And I vow to follow you the rest of my life. You need to do that. And then drop the deadly habits. And begin to be a follower of Christ. You walk into church and settle down. You hear the word of God and obey it. And a new day begins in your life. Anywhere you are, lift your hand and say, Father, forgive my sins. I am sorry the way I've lived my life. I know Jesus died for me. And I receive him today as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? I believe God has heard you. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, let their sins be forgiven. Let the yokes of bondage be broken. Let their lives be made new. And let a new glory come forth. Today, begin a new thing. 
in Jesus' amazing name. Amen. Everyone, please take your seat briefly.